2018 Camry. Toyota, let's go places. Valley Conference, Illinois State brings in a five-game win streak into Terre Haute, Indiana to take on Indiana State. I'm Chase Eric, and alongside me, my fellow student broadcast partner, Sean Anthony. Thank you, Chase. We are right in the middle of conference play for these two teams, and despite Illinois State's incredible winning streak, tonight's result is really unpredictable. Now, the Redbirds have proven their strength at home, but can they bring that same intensity to Memorial Stadium tonight? Whatever the case, you can be sure these Sycamores will not go down without a fight. We should be in for a good one here on the Valley on ESPN3. Check out all the options you have at Dorset Hyundai during our summer sales event on all of the Hyundais. So come on in, see our great gas mileage SUVs and cars, and see how we're building loyalty through excellence at Dorset Hyundai, US 41 South Terre Haute, or DorsetHyundai.com. We have leaders. We exceed goals. and make new memories every single day. Celebrating 25 years of women's athletics, we are the Missouri Valley Conference. Check out all the options you have at Dorset and Mitsubishi during Mitsubishi's 100th anniversary event. Whether it's a car or an SUV, we've got you covered on all the Mitsubishis. So come on in, see how we're building loyalty through excellence at Dorset Mitsubishi, US 41 South Terre Haute, DorsetMitsubishi.com. Welcome back for Illinois State at Indiana State. Could be a tough battle. We'll see who can get the edge with our Pepsi keys to the game. Chase, the first Pepsi key for Illinois State is to remain consistent. Now this team has been pushing consistency in their motivation and their style of play. And for the last few games, it's really been coming together for some wins. Their second key is to be to respond. Now this is almost a motto for this Illinois State team. Under every circumstance and in every situation, this team has to respond with the right with the right mechanism. Now this team will need to respond to their powerful home play with an equally powerful play away. Now for Indiana State, the two keys are confidence and taking chances. Now this team needs to be confident. After losing at home under, after their undefeated home record until last weekend and another loss again against Drake, this team needs to remain confident in themselves and in the rest of the team in order to take the win tonight. Now the second key is to take chances. Coach Hanley has been preaching all season. These girls need to buckle down, receive the ball, turn, and fire away if they want to have a chance against this Illinois State offense. And now we'll take a look at the Toyota starting lineup first for Illinois State. They got Katie Del Fava, who was the MVC Defensive Player of the Week. Chase and Defensive Player of the Week she was. In the last seven matches, Kate Del Fava only gave away two goals, not including the last game against Loyola. Now that's an especially incredible feat, considering she was not originally a defensive player. Kate Del Fava came in as a midfielder and was moved to the defensive line to step up. And for Indiana State, they have Casey Wallace, who has held it down in the back line all season. Chase, talk about an anchor for this team. Casey Wallace is a senior defender and has been doing some great things for this team. Consider her freshman year starting in 16 of 17 matches. In her sophomore year, starting 15 of 16 matches. And this season and last season starting every single game. This is an anchor for this team and part of the reason why this Sycamore defense is considered one of the best defensive lines in the Missouri Valley Conference. Absolutely, Sean. And you mentioned it, both, be, both these schools being in the Missouri, Missouri Valley Conference. We'll take a look at the conference standings. Chase, Indiana State is only two from the bottom right now, but that is not shaking them. Uh, Coach Hanley has been saying all season how important it is that the girls remain confident in themselves and their team throughout the season. You know, that said, Illinois State has been improving in the conference. They started out a little lower, but given that consistency, they've been stepping up in the last few games. And we'll see that here again tonight. Absolutely. And Illinois State got a huge conference win just earlier this week, beating Loyola 5-3. to A big win for them. Helps keep them in the top of the Missouri Valley Conference as this match is now underway. Absolutely, Chase. And as you can see, there's already a hard press forward. It's not surprising. Both of these teams are especially interested in scoring that first goal. It makes a big difference. And we've seen that a lot in the Missouri Valley Conference. The teams who score first tend to be the teams who hold the, the power in the game throughout the 90 minutes. Yeah, it seems like that's the way it should be. But both coaches we talked to really put emphasis on that, where Indiana State's played from behind quite often. That's something that they just can't do as a program. And on the other side of that, Illinois State, they found a lot of success now with this five-game win streak. A lot of that because they found success getting that early goal. Absolutely, Chase. Like you said, both coaches have talked about this. And we know that Indiana State has mentioned before, even when they played Missouri State and Kansas City last weekend, that 
that scoring that first goal was important to them. Scoring it all and a lot is important to them, especially testing their goalkeepers on the opposing team. So that is something that's important to Indiana State, and we know that's something that's important for Illinois State tonight. So we'll just see who puts out more more shots on goal tonight. It's going to be a tough one. Illinois State, they find a lot of shots going on goal, especially just throughout the entire program. Indiana State, they don't see too many, but they're a lot more efficient. Now Indiana State trying to get into their offensive third. Chase, the ball's moving around a lot already, which is good. The intensity is high and clearly from both teams. Of course, Illinois State has a lot to prove. You know, they've already done what they needed to do at home. Now they're coming to an away team and hoping for the same result. On the other hand, Indiana State, a historically strong home team, has lost their last two home games. So they both have something to prove a little bit tonight. They really do. Something's got to give. We'll see who can shake it up here tonight. Riley Teal with the early throw in. Just trying to get this one into the offensive third. No one from Indiana State able to chase it down. Indiana State is clearly trying to create some options at the beginning of this game, pushing the ball up. But that said, here we go with Illinois State also trying to do the same thing, push that ball up into the other team's uh, defensive third. And that's something we'll probably see quite often from Illinois State. They're going to try to push this ball up to their offensive third all night. They love to dominate time of possession. Absolutely. And Chase, if I'm being honest, I'm seeing a lot of intensity from both of these teams all night. Uh, both of them have a lot to strive for. Like we said, they've got both some, they've both got something on the line. So we'll just see how long they can hang in there. Right now, you know, they're putting a lot of intensity out there. We'll see if they can keep that going for 90 minutes. It makes for a great matchup for us to watch, definitely. Indiana State, they take a lot of pride in their back line, but we know we're going to see a lot from their offense tonight as that's something they've been trying to work on throughout, throughout this week. Absolutely, Chase. We know that Katie Wells has definitely been an anchor for this offensive team. She's only a junior now, but even as a freshman, she was playing in this game and, and, uh, and stepping up to the plate and creating options for the Sycamore offense, which you know historically hasn't been there. The defensive line has been the strong part of their team. So having Katie Wells up there is extremely important. That said, Simonis is another person that they're putting um, behind Katie Wells, expecting her to step up as well and give some help and especially some pressure on that offensive third. Um, that way you can alleviate some pressure off of your defense, your Sycamore defense that's been working hard all season. And we're seeing a lot of pushes back and forth right now. Illinois State with the advantage. Nothing there on the right side. Indiana State with the takeaway. Jason, neither of these teams are being shy tonight. Nobody's dropping the ball back to the safe defense. They're all trying to push it through and see if they can make some contact, hopefully test the goalies a little bit. That's something that both of these teams wanted to do, especially here early on. And we're going to see an up-tempo matchup here today, Sean. Absolutely. I mean, both of these teams are pinging the ball around, and, and to be honest, they're, they're keeping it pretty close. The, the passes are pretty crisp, and, uh, and they're maintaining control. But that said, they're all pushing hard, so they're, they're giving a challenge right there. You saw Katie Wells challenging the ball, making them, forcing it to the defense. But that said, Illinois State is able to regroup and put the ball on the other side of the field. Unable to chase that ball down, but a great display of what they're trying to do here today with that through ball. And you take a look at Coach Brad Sylvie for Illinois State. It's his first season. Chase, Brad Sylvie is an incredible coach for this team and has, has the, has, is feeling responsible for this team's confidence level and, and, and uh, has been pushing the girls to work really hard. But he's the one who st coined this idea of what is your response. No matter what the situation is, he wants them to respond. And, uh, and a big part of that is that um, he wants the team to feel responsible for their own goals and for their own work ethic. Absolutely, and this isn't a new, it's a new role for him, but he's with the same program. He was an assistant coach for Illinois State the last two seasons, and he's been a head coach before going back to his time at Iowa Western Community College. Sean, he had a record of 105-11-8. A lot of success there. Chase, that is an incredible, that is an incredible record, especially for college, even though it was at a community college um, Coach has had a lot of experience with these teams, and, that, and that's the important thing. Having a record like that shows that he is experienced. He knows how to motivate a team. And now, if we just look back even farther into his history, he was the technical director and coach for three club teams before that, so he's been in the game. He understands the mentality not only of the game, not only the strategy of the game, but he knows how to read into the mind of the players. And it's so big to, when you move up to a head coach, now Julie Hanley, she moved up to a head coach position. It's her second season with Indiana State. 
Chase, this is kind of uh, an interesting um, piece of history for, for Coach Hanley today. You know, this is her second season with ISU, but before that, she was a grad assistant for two years at Illinois State. And so she has some history, not only with this team, but with this coach and the strategy of this team uh, moving forward, which makes for, for a bit of a difference tonight. I'm sure there's something weighing on her heart being against, uh, you know, a team that she used to belong to. It really does. Illinois State, of course, has found a lot of success throughout their time. But they found a lot of success when Julie Hanley was there as an assistant, or excuse me, as a, a grad assistant. The team went 22-13-2 and two in her time there, was MVC regular season champion, MVC tournament champions, and had an NCAA, NCAA tournament berth. And Chase, that again, that's an incredible record, and we're seeing a chance here from Illinois State. So that one batted out by Indiana State's defense. First time we've seen a lot of pressure coming from both both of these teams. First time we've really seen an opportunity come out of it. Now we've got a corner kick. Chase, talking about corner kicks and set pieces, Indiana State against their game against Drake just this last week lost three points all on set pieces against this team. So that is an important part for this Illinois uh, for this Indiana sorry Indiana State team to be able to regroup and be able to fight against those. Clearly that worked for them right now. I mean that was a save for for a set piece. Yes, on this first set piece, that Indiana State faces Sullivan comes out able to corral that one in. Speaking of Sullivan, Chase, Indiana State hasn't had a consistent goalie. But that said, Coach Hanley is not underrating her goalies. In fact, she knows she has a strong defensive line. In her words, she knows she has a strong goalie, whether that's Sullivan, whether that's Riscosa. And so clearly that was working here for night, or here tonight. Uh, Sullivan, like you said, grabbed that ball, booted it out there, and here we are back in, uh, on Illinois State's defensive third. Two goalies who have been playing very well for Indiana State. The Sycamores just waiting to see which one will be able to Get the edge a little bit more. Be able to take this starting position over full time. Is that ball batted out? Whenever that ball goes out, you can see the pace of the game just slow down a little bit. Every person is able to regroup, see the field again, decide where they want to go with the ball. We'll see what Illinois State is able to make of that now. Throwing almost taken away right, right on time. And a big boot and some physicality there from Indiana State. Not to say that we're surprised. Both these teams have been physical. And uh, and Indiana State specifically has been trying to be more physical, trying to win, a, win those one-on-ones, especially since their last home game against, uh, sorry, against their last couple home games against Missouri State and, uh, and uh, Kansas City. A team that plays with a lot of grit. That's something that Julie Hanley also brought up in with her time when she was with Illinois State is they hated playing Indiana State because they knew what they were going to get. They were going to get a gritty match from the get-go. Absolutely. Now, Coach Hanley has been motivating her team to fight that way all season. She's been pushing them, especially to win those one-on-one -on -one battles. And in Coach Coach Hanley has been saying that if they can't win those one-on-one -on -one battles and, and push some aggression up, then they won't be able to win this match. And that through ball just a little too far. Haley Smith able to come out and get that one. Chase, even though that wasn't a shot on goal, that is what you want to see from two offensive lines. Push those goalies outside of their safe spot, outside of the box, and, and challenge them. See what they can do outside of the 18-yard line. And the goalie jumped out there for Illinois State and, and had to challenge that ball. She comes out that far. We know Indiana State, they're going to want to try to take that quick shot no matter what. So if she keeps coming out that far, something could open up for the Sycamores. Illinois State's defense with the answer and takeaway. Chase, let's just talk about the intensity of that play and, and the response here. This is Illinois State getting an almost play on their goalkeeper, and they respond by pushing the ball way, the, way up the field. Interesting that they go to that right side, had an open man on the left side, go through the middle, and if that through ball is there, a great connection. Absolutely. If that through ball is there, that is some dangerous work. First of all, the corner has some space and time to push that ball into the center, and then you have your offense sprinting up the field to make contact in the box. And a deep setback this time. Smith going to boot it out past midfield. A through ball just off the mark. Chase, we just saw Indiana State's defense close in on that ball. Now, it did make it through, but the offense didn't get a chance to put a foot on it. But that is typical of Indiana State to close in on that gap as soon as it's created. But again, that was fantastic play by Illinois State to see the gap and shoot for it. 
It really was. We've seen Indiana State's defense start to push up just a little bit more. That's something that they also wanted to work on is closing those gaps in between their lines. Now another takeaway for the Sycamores. And a great deflection there coming from Illinois State. Again, just smart defending by Indiana State, allowing that ball to roll out. That way, being able to start a new set piece, starting to start a new play, allowing the girls to not only get a chance to, to rest, but to, to regroup and decide where they want that ball to go. Also takes away that chance of maybe turning around in that ball game and taking away right there in Illinois, Illinois State's offensive third. Exactly. Sullivan out towards midfield, headed out. Riley Teal not wasting too much time trying to find someone to go to. And off the first touch, Wells puts it out of bounds. Emily Edelman throwing in now. And there's the defensive pressure from Indiana State. Chase, you're going to see that intensity all night. That is very classic of Indiana State to push forward and, and challenge each and every one of those balls. And they get rewarded for their efforts as getting the ball. Back to Edelman for a deep shot. Sullivan's going to come out and get it. Now, Chase, even taking those deep shots is not at all surprising from this Illinois State team. Just like you mentioned, they have a fantastic shot record, second in the MVC in shots on goal, which is huge. I mean, 126 shots on goal, that's 126 times that goalie has to save the, save the ball. And another opportunity here, and it goes in the back of the net. Sullivan unable to get there. Chase, not even a second is wasted for this Illinois State team. As soon as that ball is open, as soon as there's a gap, they're firing away at the net. And here we see in the replay, they'll just take the opportunity. Boom, there's a pass out and not even a second touch. First touch into the corner of the box. And that is what, that is what makes this Illinois State offense such a threat. It really does. We were talking right then about the pressure they put on with their offense, taking those shots, and that play just set up perfectly. So an early 1-0 lead here, and we talked about how much Illinois State's looking to get that first goal and how much Indiana State doesn't want to play from behind. Chase, let's talk about the Pepsi key for the night, which was confidence for this Indiana State team, and this isn't boding well for them. If they wanted confidence at the beginning of this game, and especially trying to make that first goal in the back of the net, this is the opposite of what they want to see. But they're still bringing that pressure here right now. Had a great cross going in. You know, that's probably one of the good things about not having the first goal. It gives you some grit, something to fight for in the very beginning. And there's a shot on goal, but it's on the ground. It easily scooped up. Now, I've seen some great things out of Haley Smith tonight, goalkeeper for Illinois State. You know, it takes a lot of confidence to jump out of that goal and chase the ball for 18 yards and grab it at the corner of the goalie box or at the, the outside of the goalie box. That takes a lot of mental strength and, uh, and, and fortitude. So we've seen that here tonight from Haley Smith and see if she can keep that going with, with some offense and some quick offense from people like Katie Wells and Simonis. Indiana State trying to put a lot of pressure on here now. The defense with the answer for Illinois State. Unable to clear. Maybe an opportunity for Indiana State once again taken away. Nowhere to go up the line. Indiana State is not wasting a second with that throw in, which doesn't look like it's working out for them. Perhaps they need to take a second, calm down, and re realize where that ball should go. It almost seems like they're just trying to force it up there um, to get a goal, to get at least a shot on goal. Trying to take as many opportunities as they can here early on. Have a free kick here. And, of course, we've talked about how Indiana State doesn't like playing from behind. We'll wait for this free kick to come in towards the box. On the ground. Sycamore is looking to come away with it. And that will be called a penalty. But, Sean, we've talked about how Indiana State, they don't want to play from behind. Julie Hanley talked about how 
this team wanting to get their confidence up, they got to win the game from between the ears. It's got to be a mindset that they can they don't have to fight back, that they're a team that is strong enough. Yeah, absolutely, Chase. They need to be able to have the confidence in their own ability and in the ability in the ability of their team. Now, what we just saw there was a set piece and a shot on goal. Another thing Coach Hanley has been preaching all year has been if you don't get that first touch, at least get the second ball and push that ball outside of the box or put that, put that ball in the back of the net or if you're playing defensively outside of the box. And, and while Indiana State didn't grab that first touch in the last, in the last set piece, they did get that second ball. You got to win the first or the second touch. Maybe an opportunity here for Illinois State inside the box. And that shot off the mark. Teal will let it go out of bounds. Chase, not too sure if that was a shot or a cross or what exactly that was, but I can be honest, that's not something I'm surprised about. Illinois State is pushing numbers and pushing shots in front of this goalkeeper tonight, and that's that's the way they've been playing for the last five games, and what do we have? Five wins in a row. So that's not something that Illinois State is, is, uh, is shy from, uh, shooting on goal. And that's why they're finding so much success. They've scored 12 goals in their last three games. That's just something that's absolutely ridiculous. You look at the game against Loyola. It was a 5-3 game. Silva talked about how you score three goals, you're normally going to win that game. That's good enough to win a game. Mm -hmm. But they were able to able to have that mindset to where you score one goal, we're going to score two. Oh, yeah, that and that's another fantastic mindset. And, and, and a lot of this game, especially when you're playing a game for 90 minutes and you're on your feet, a lot of it shifts from physical aptitude to mental strength. And that's something that this team has been able to maintain uh, this whole season, and especially in the last few games. Absolutely, and that cross off the mark once again. So we'll have another goal kick. Chase, we're seeing a lot of opportunities for this Illinois State team. At least they're throwing the opportunities out there and hoping that the numbers will catch up. And what's interesting is before the first goal, we saw pressure from both teams. We were seeing a lot of action on both sides of the field. Now that Illinois State's got that first goal, it's not like they're thinking we can just set back and play defense now. They're taking as many opportunities as they did before. Absolutely, and it seems that they found their rhythm. And the question is, can Indiana State catch their own rhythm so they can meet this Illinois State team at, in their offensive third? Trying to keep that one from going out, and they do. Here's the setback, almost taken away. That touch was good enough to stop a ball that was very strong. Sycamore's trying to keep control of this ball right now. And here's that pressure from the Illinois State defense, and now a takeaway. There's a lot of movement in the middle of this field, and, and that's when it becomes especially important for midfielders and defenders to communicate about where that ball is going. You don't want that ball to get it behind you. But that said, it's also important for the offense to communicate. Coach Hanley was saying that this team, this Sycamore team, needs to work as a team. They need to be defending as a whole team. That means from the offense, from that forward, Katie Wells, to the back line with Casey, uh, Casey Wallace, the whole team needs to be working as a unit in, in their defensive play you have to get numbers behind the ball and bring that pressure indiana state they're trying to work more on that another thing that they wanted to hit on is offset pieces especially corners get numbers in the box absolutely and that will make all the difference for this team if they have the numbers up there if the ball gets through it creates an opportunity but if the ball doesn't get through or if your numbers aren't up there or if you are chasing the ball instead of the ball coming to your feet you create options and opportunities for failure and for for mishaps you really do, and now Dan off the foul is going to set, set this ball back, trying to push it forward. And that's a huge boot from the defensive line, and that's, that's kind of what they're looking for in that defense. Push the ball up there, give your offense and your offensive midfielders a chance to make something happen. It's a nice relief for the defensive line to get that ball outside of the Sycamore's uh, defensive half. Smith, the sophomore, getting the start here today. Seeing some good passing and connections here on the left side. Chase, that was a string of almost six passes between those Illinois State players. Now that is what you call a rhythm. That's what you call chemistry that keeps this team together. We'll see if Indiana State can maintain that same kind of chemistry and keep those passes together. But as you see, they're met with some, some, uh, some disturbance from that Illinois State defense. 
And as that defense comes through with the ball, trying to kick back just a little bit. Indiana State now with it. Teal going to send one in. And no connections made. Wells to bring it down. Towards the middle of the box and the defense with the clear. Chase, this is just what we're talking about. Even if you can put the ball in the center of the field, if there's no one there to catch it, you're losing an opportunity. This team needs to maintain confidence in each other, but also needs to get some chemistry, and they need to be able to know where each other are on the, on the field. Now, that's hard to do in high-intense situations, especially when that ball's in the offensive third and moving so fast, but it's something that each team ne is necessary to have. It absolutely is, not a lot of what Hanley has been preaching recently is that she needs players that are going to be selfish, that they're going to take that shot, maybe not look for that first pass, but to turn around and go for the goal. That one's going to roll out of bounds as well. And Chase, we're seeing a big sub in with Elena St Alina Stefan, which, and she is a pivotal person for the Sycamore team. Um, been throwing her body into this game, into the physicality of this game all season. Definitely someone that Coach Hanley is expecting to step up tonight. A player who goes after it no matter what. And a player that Indiana State, even though being a freshman, is looking forward to what she can bring to the field. Absolutely. And, and speaking of freshmen, this team is a young team, uh, so to speak. They've got a lot of pressure on the younger pe on the younger players. Now, you talked about Alina Steffen, but there's also um, some other freshmen on this team that are expected to step up as well. You know, we see that with, uh, with Varner and Hart as well, who are two other freshmen on the Sycamore team that are expected to play, sometimes expected to start and make something happen for the Sycamore offense. And that's what you get when you have so many newcomers coming to a team this year. Indiana State brings in 10 freshmen and three transfers being added in Two of those transfers being Tessa Leon and Kaylin Eddy, two players who've been doing great for the Sycamores. Absolutely. Now, last week we talked about this Indiana State team not being able to hang on with their home games, but Tessa Leon subbed in and was able to put one in the back of the net. Now, that's something you really want to expect from your bench players in the beginning of the game. You want them to be able to come in 10 minutes into the game, 15 minutes into the game, 45 or 46 minutes into the game, and put a goal in the back of the net. That's a wonderful thing to have. But of course, Tessa Leong has stepped up in the last week, pushing whether in practice or games, and now started here tonight. I get, got that start here today. Now the Sigmore is looking to push. Riley Teal meets the back line. And a deep shot off the mark. Chase, we have seen Riley Teal be a very fluid player in this game. Now, she's out here in the back defensive line on the outside, but that doesn't mean she's not going in towards the box. Now, you saw um, on this field, you can see it at the 20-yard line, but, but Riley Teal was right up there. In fact, if she had an opportunity, she could have taken the shot. Of course, the in Illinois State defense was there to prevent something from happening, but it's very nice when you can have a defensive player as versatile as Riley Teal able to play defensively and also move the ball into the front third. We saw on display there, meeting the back line, the footwork to get the quick stop and pass over towards the right. Absolutely, and, and that created an opportunity now. In one way, that was a wasted opportunity, that ball going way over the net, but it was still an opportunity. And a hard takedown at midfield. Now, Chase, we've been saying this all night, and it's not a surprise that this Indiana State team is extremely physical. They, are, they have been working on their physicality and are expected to push, uh, push hard in this game. And it's hard to say what exactly is the right thing, especially when the ball's moving that fast and players are so close to each other, what happened. But there was, it looks like it'll be a free kick for Illinois State. And it is the Indiana State with a quick takeaway. Looking to push the ball down now towards the middle. And the flag goes up for offsides. Half of the first half is already over, and that was the first offsides that we've seen here tonight. And it's not so bad uh, for Indiana State. That was a great opportunity, great ball. And in many ways, the offense, that Sycamore offense, did exactly what they were supposed to do. The ball got off the foot just a second late. And because of that, um, our offensive, or the Sycamore offensive player was offsides. Stefan just a little bit too far forward on that one as this one rolls out.
throw in for the Redbirds towards their offensive third. Looking to switch, and they will. Ball's moving around a lot in this Illinois State offensive third. And, Sean, we're seeing a once again, neither one of these teams are going to give an inch. We see, mm -hmm. are seeing Illinois State's offense put as much pressure as they can, but the back line for Indiana State is just staying strong. Absolutely. We saw there again Riley Teal pushing in and not letting that ball even get, a, like you said, even a centimeter of space. She's pushing that ball out as far as she can, as fast as she can. So we'll have another throw in for the Redbirds. Now, Chase, this game started out very intense for both teams, not creating too many opportunities. Maybe 10 minutes ago, Illinois State was able to make a lot more chances. They put one in the back of the net, had a couple more opportunities. But again, we're seeing a little bit more fight from the Sycamore defense, and they haven't had an opportunity really in the last 5, 10 minutes. They haven't. Illinois State's going to try to shake some things up, though, bringing in Natalie Van Lowe, the freshman. And now Indiana State with the substitution, and that'll be Danielle Varner coming in. Chase, Danielle Varner has been a very important part of this team. Not only is she important in moving the ball around and creating some opportunities for that offensive, for those offensive players, um, but she is a leader in, in the underclassmen here. Um, and it's important to have people like that on the team. But that said, Varner has been fighting some sickness and, and some injuries in the, last, in the last week. She has, but she's really grown into her position, especially defensively. That one taken out. Varner's been able to not only grow into her role defensively, but Indiana State was looking more for attacking from her, and that's what she did. As Sullivan's going to let that one go out. Chase, you're absolutely right. Coach Hanley is expecting Varner to step up and even be selfish with the ball, especially against Drake. In that game, she had four shots, and that's that's extremely important for a midfielder like Varner to step up and put some shots on, on the goal and test that goalie out. Not only does that... Not only does that build her own confidence, not only does that build her team confidence, but that shakes the other team a little bit. Um, Drake is not feeling confident when Varner has the ball. They know she's going to take the shot. Indiana State's offense that night was really able to work through Varner. Trying to stay on sides, and Indiana State will. Contact made as that ball is going to roll out. Chase, that was a big play. A lot of physicality. But that is exactly what Indiana State was going for. They put the ball up there, thought they had the speed, thought they had the numbers. Katie Wells was up there um, as well. But it looks like it was just a, mit, just a few inches off from a clean shot on the goal. But that will set up the corner kick for Indiana State. We'll see if this Illinois State defense can, can match up for this offense from, Sycam from the Sycamores. I'm sure they're eager to put one in the back of the net right now. Set piece with Indiana State's players spread out. And the first touch, good enough to take it out. Riley Teal to send it back into the box. Smith able to come out. Indiana State's defense right now, though, Sean, on the other side of the pitch, they've been able to slow down the high off high offense of Illinois State right now only with four shots in the game. Absolutely, and that is extremely important. Like we said, Illinois State this season has put a lot of shots on goal. Um, they had 294 before their game against Loyola, and that was a tremendous feat all on its own. Having Sorry, not 294 goals, 294 shots compared to Indiana State's 136 shots. So that, that makes a big matchup here, and it's important for the Sycamore defense to shut that down quick. Something they wanted to do as a team, Indiana State did, is take pressure off their back line. And how do you do that, Sean? You move the ball over to your offensive third. That's something that they've been doing here today. Absolutely, and Coach Hanley has been talking about that all season. 
This Sycamore defense is definitely a strong one, but that said, they get a lot of stress and pressure when that offensive third doesn't hold on to the ball. They have to run more, they have to fight more, and they have to prevent more shots. It's hard for the Sycamore defense to maintain that 100% attitude all game if the ball isn't ever in the offensive third. It really is. Indiana State now back in their defensive third. Had a risky play as Sullivan tried to clear and got deflected. Now we'll have Jordan Denton to throw in around midfield. Looking to get that ball over to Stefan. Gets the first touch, but now batted out. Chase, this Illinois State is also not giving an inch of space. You could see Stefan was clearly guarded very hard, and it's very hard to receive a ball when you're that tight. Now, that said, if that ball was just a little higher, a little farther, Stefan could have grabbed a foot on that and pushed it back in the center of the field. Of course, that wasn't the case just now. But on the bright side, Indiana State gets a throw in, in their offensive third and now sets it up for another set piece. So with Wells setting up the corner kick, Indiana State in a similar set piece. A lot of players on the far post, but spread out. As it comes in, Indiana State puts a head on it. And nothing called as that ball batted out. And now they'll call it the goal. Chase, that is another fantastic opportunity by Indiana State and able to capitalize on the set pieces that we were talking about a while ago. And it's a hard call to know for sure because that ball is bobbling back and forth, but it did happen to cross that goal line. And right there you see a Chase bouncing into the blue, bouncing back out over the goal line, and that's a goal for Indiana State. And today we have a ball game. Yes, we do. Now tied up at one apiece. Illinois State going to put a lot of pressure on the offense now. Chase, being able to answer goal for goal in the first half is going to be big for this Indiana State team. You can bet the energy is high and the intensity and the confidence is definitely high for these girls right now. They're going to want nothing more than to defend their home, game, the home field tonight. And we'll see what Illinois State does. Is this one now going out? But what their big thing is, is how are you going to respond? That's what they're saying on the bench right now. What's your response? Absolutely. You can see they didn't waste a second pushing that ball up the field, trying to get an opportunity. Of course, when you push that ball up the field, left side of the field, and you meet Riley Teal there in their defense, she's a smart player. She's not going to let you get a foot on that ball. And if she can help it, she's going to let it go out the back line. And that's what we just saw right now. Even if you do get through, you're going to have to face Hannah Sullivan, another player who you really don't want to go one-on-one -on -one with. Absolutely. Of course, for Illinois State, they want to have as many opportunities as possible. And like you said, they want to respond as quick as possible, and that's what they try to do. And, and now another through ball for Indiana State, and they're going to have a 2-1 lead. Chase, we're talking about response for this Illinois State team, but what about this Indiana State team? They just put two goals in the, in the back of Illinois State's in the back of Illinois State's net, uh, net in the last two minutes. That is, in fact, it is incredible for Indiana State. A great response. Smith had to come all the way out, and that allowed Indiana State to get that open corner. And now, Illinois State on their heels. They're definitely asking, what's your response now that you're down? Chase, there was definitely some intensity on that play, definitely some closeness with the goalie on that play. So while we don't know what those players are arguing about, when you get scored on in two minutes, in two plays, something might be off, or at least the players might see something that we don't see. Of course, the emotions are high and the intensity is high down there, that they may see, see something that they wouldn't regularly call a foul. Maybe a little miscommunication on their side as well. We'll see if they try to put on as much pressure as what they were. As that one goes out, have a throw in coming up for Indiana State. Let's take another look at that goal. 
Chase, that looked clean to me. She had the ball in front of her, didn't make contact with the goalie, and just happened to pop it over her legs. But that said, that replay showed a crucial mistake by this Illinois State defense. That ball went right through the legs of a defender. That's a big, big problem. But at the same time, that shows the um, confidence and the intensity which, which, with which that Indiana State offense was there. They, Even though that ball was going straight to the defender's legs, they expected it to go through and was ready for it when it came to their feet. They were, and now Indiana State with that 2-1 lead. Trying to bring this into the halftime. So another free kick here for the Sycamores. Okay, Sullivan's going to keep this on the ground over towards Wells. Almost a great move as it's sent out. We'll see if it was touched by Illinois State. So now Wells with the corner kick. That was a fantastic move by Wells to fake going on to the, uh, to the outside and back towards her own goal, letting the ball go through her legs. But Illinois State did read it quite well and got a foot on it. That said, Katie Wells was ready to let it go and is hoping that this second set piece will look turn out like the first. Trying to go far post. Can't make a connection. Indiana State, though, already with three corner kicks on the night. Definitely some physicality in the air tonight. We see a Illinois State team member on the ground. Chase, when you go up for those set pieces, it's really a gamble of what's going to happen. Both of the teams are fighting 100% to get that ball, and they don't care who's standing in front of them or behind them. They want to get that first contact, and we know Coach Hanley wants her team to get that first ball. She really does, and it, it makes for a dangerous play when that set piece is up in the air. Indiana State last season was great off set pieces up in the air because Maddie Orff was a phenomenal player being able to get that first touch. Now she's playing over at Sweden. Indiana State still looking for the similar, similar plays. Absolutely. Indiana State had a lot of players who were able to step up in the air and take that ball in the air last season. Of course, they don't have this se that this season, but perhaps having that extra motivation, knowing that people like Maddie Orff are now across the sea, should they have the added responsibility to get that ball in the air despite their circumstances. Of course, as we mentioned, Sycamore is bringing in some newcomers who can maybe fill that role. And returning players such as Wells trying to continue that trend as well. And the takeaway from or by the Redbirds. That through ball off the mark. Another opportunity here for Indiana State to settle down, regroup, get the chance to put that ball forward and, and keep the ball where they want it and to have um, their control over the ball and over the field. That's what these, these goal kicks are able to provide for Indiana State. Let's see if they can use it to that advantage. Everyone on the right side of the field. Sycamore is to bring it down. Now over to Wells. And just ahead of the Sycamore. Chase, it seems like they've been trying. The Sycamores have been trying to push the ball up that right side of the field, but met with a little bit of hardship from this Illinois State defense. I believe it's Abby Joyce who is out there with fast feet and able to catch that ball, even though the Sycamores are trying to make contact. Indiana State almost able to get that ball back into the box. The clear from the Redbirds. Now, Chase, we've seen the Redbirds all night and perhaps for the last five games consistently push that ball forward and be a very offensive team. They've been playing a little safer, but there they were going for another offensive opportunity. Yeah, that push there was going full speed ahead no matter what. The through ball not there. Just a couple minutes ago, we saw their defense get a little bit more uh, hesitant in their, in their play. They weren't pushing the ball as much and as fast, but this Redbird offense is not scared to push that ball forward and see what they can do with this uh, Indiana State keeper. Sullivan out towards midfield. They'll be pushed back into their defensive third and will shield it to let it go out. Again, another opportunity to set the pace for the game. And right now, taking a lot of time off the clock, trying to go into halftime with this 2-1 to one lead. 
Chase, this is going to be a big deal for Indiana State coming off the half with the lead. It's not something that they've had in the last few games. It'll be big for their confidence tonight. And you can bet that Coach Hanley is on the sideline, proud of her team for making that contact, especially in those set pieces. Some physical play there, Indiana State to keep the ball. And maybe the Sycamores were listening to the Redbirds when they heard the, if you score a goal on us, we'll score too. Indiana State down early in this one, taking that advice. Now with the 2-1 lead. Absolutely, and let's not forget, the Redbirds did not stop at 2. If you score 1, we'll score 2 or maybe even 3. We'll see if Indiana State can push those numbers up as well. Redbirds were able to have the response against Loyola. Again, in that matchup, they went down 1 and ended up going into halftime, tied at 2 apiece. Won that match 5-3. to three. Chase, if, that, if nothing else, that should tell you that this score does not mean much to the Redbirds. They have faced it all, and they know what it feels like to be down one. And like you said in the last game, they were down one, ended up winning up by two. So that's a, a big difference, and there's a lot that, what, 51 minutes can bring to the game. There really is. Wells not able to get around the defenders there to even get across as that one sent out. So Smith with the ball. And putting on the boot to send that one past midfield. Redbirds with the throw in just outside of their offensive third. Unable to get that one into the box, but maintaining possession. Angel Carell back in the game. Indiana State using the space of the field. You see Katie Wells making those fantastic crisp passes into the middle of the field. But of course, Coach has been saying, be a little more selfish, Wells. Take those shots when you have the opportunity. Now, she hasn't been in the box yet with the ball on this play, but perhaps when she does, she will take some of those shots. Indiana State with the cross gets deflected out. And we see, again, more physicality from Indiana State. And would you be surprised, Alina Steffen is caught right in the middle of that. Indiana State going to keep the pressure on as much as they can, even with this 2-1 to one lead. So a battle right now at midfield. And Alexis Hart checks into this game. One of the freshmen that have been making an impact for the Sycamores. That one goes out, so it will be a throw-in for the Redbirds. That substitution was a freshman for a freshman. Varner coming out. Chase, Varner has stepped up in a lot of ways in a lot of places this season, but hasn't been feeling the best this week. So it's really going to be important for Varner to have every opportunity that she needs in this game, and that'll create a lot of opportunities for Indiana State as a whole. Nowhere to go there. Hitting the deck, and now Sycamore's trying to maintain possession. Wells going to set back. Chase, that was not as dangerous for the Sycamores when that ball went through the defender's legs, but we saw that happen with Illinois State just a few minutes ago, and that was a scoring goal for Indiana State. So that's not some, it's not a mistake that defenders can take lightly. It really isn't. And yeah, it's not as big of a mistake as what it was on Illinois State side, but that actually might end up would have helping Indiana State being able to spread out the field. 
bringing in that defense, or excuse me, would have been the offensive unit trying to come up. No, you're absolutely right. Sometimes that ball does get congested on the right side of the field. We've seen Indiana State do that time and again, pushing the ball up one side of the field. And even though that was a mistake, I think you brought up a great, op a great, great point. Look at where the ball is now. On the left side of the field, the, the field is spread quite wide and giving an opportunity, and like we just saw, an opportunity for Indiana State. Unable to make that crisp connection to Wells. Redbirds now with the ball, looking to push on the left side. And a takeaway. Now the Redbirds back with the ball. You could see they were trying to get that triangle passing going and beating out the defenders, but the passes just weren't right where they needed to be. So we're still seeing that pressure coming from the Redbirds, but maybe not the tempo that we saw to open up this match. Absolutely, Chase. And and speaking of that tempo, even Coach Hanley said that before before this game, the first 15 of the game, 15 minutes of the game, will dictate how the game goes. Now we saw. The uh, Illinois State Redbirds bring in some intensity in that 15 minutes, but the Sycamores gave it right back to them. Now you come into the bottom of 45 minutes, and you see both these teams fighting to the to the grit for, for every single one of these possessions and, and every single one of these goals. Talk about a response. Indiana State was able to come back after getting that first goal scored on them. And now as we approach just a minute left to play here in the first half, We'll see if Redbirds can maybe put up another opportunity here. And off of the switch, Redbirds come away with the ball. Just outside of the box as that one gets deflected. Chase has another huge opportunity for Illinois State if that ball had gotten through, but tough chance doing that against this Indiana State defense that we've been talking about all year. The Sycamores applied pressure and they were rewarded with the ball. Another thing to think about is that this Illinois State offense has not been shy about shooting, and that's showed up. They're second for shots on goal and first for shots taken in the Missouri Valley Conference. Having that kind of record is definitely something that will go notice. Coach knew it before she started this game, and perhaps that's what she told her defenders. Don't let them have that shot. And, Sean, that's something that they've really been slowed down on. Illinois State's only had four shots in this half, three on goal, so a great percentage but not really putting a lot up. Absolutely. That's not much at all for this Illinois State offense, which is used to putting up a ton of shots in, 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 in the first half especially. And that will do it for the first half. So Indiana State is going to go into the locker room up 2-1 to one over Illinois State. I want get one wings are the best. And I love the taste of free. To me, it tastes like my garlic Parmesan wings. Really? Yeah, yeah. Interesting. I'm just eating the free one. No harm. Boneless wings are now buy one, get one free Thursdays, 5 p.m. to close. This is how you sign it. Wait is over. It's time for the Sullivan Auto Group kickoff season sale. Now shop over 200 Chevrolet, Buick, and GMC trucks. Now get over $10,000 off on a new 17 Silverado 4x4. And you can't pass up a low, low price. Get a Chevy Cruze starting at $13,995 and a Chevy Impala for only $15,995. Now ask about 0% financing for 72 months and you got a game plan that's a sure winner. $10,000 savings and 0% is a game-winning deal for Chevrolet, Buick, and GMC at the Sullivan Auto Group kickoff season sale. I want get one wings are the best. And I love the taste of free. To me, it tastes like my garlic Parmesan wings. Really? Yeah, yeah. Interesting. I'm just eating the free one. No harm. Boneless wings are now buy one, get one free Thursdays, 5 p.m. to close. This is how you sign it. Welcome back. It's been a great matchup. Indiana State leading right now 2-1 to one over Illinois State here at halftime. Been a phenomenal game. But we're going to go ahead and take a look at the Missouri Valley Conference news and notes. And first, starting off is going to be with Drake. Who let the dogs out? 
Chase Drake has been an incredible game, or has been an incredible team this season. Really pushing, uh, pushing the Missouri Valley Conference, going undefeated in the last seven games. That is big in the in the Missouri Valley Conference, and it's been doing a lot for their team and their confidence as they're climbing up the ranks. And they got hot at the right time, just before conference season started. A strong team, and they're led by the offensive player of the week. Chase, that's especially true for Rebecca Rogers. She has been really pushing this team. She is a, a, a leader for this team and has been doing a lot. You know, she scored 11 goals this season, which is tied for the lead in the Missouri Valley Conference at 22 points. Now, the defensive player of the week is somebody we get to see here today, Katie Delfava. Absolutely, Chase. And like we said, Katie Delfava is a phenomenal player, definitely a leader for this team. Now, we said before her last game against Loyola, she had only let two goals pass in seven matches. That is an incredible feat for any defender, especially for one in the collegiate sport, especially in the Missouri Valley Conference. And now we'll go ahead and take a look at conference standings. We'll actually go to... Go to the conference standings and a lot of things could be mixed up if Indiana State gets this win if the score remains the same. Absolutely, Chase. As you can see, it's not it's not that crazy if Indiana takes this win, what chances that they have for this. Illinois State, Illinois State is only two and one. Indiana State would be one and four after this game if if they did win. And that could be great for them. Of course, if Illinois, Illinois State wins, they also have a greater chance of climbing the rankings and putting a challenge up there for Loyola and Drake. So the conference is wide open. Be sure to keep it right here. It's halftime. Indiana State and Illinois State. Welcome back. Indiana State with a 2-1 lead over Illinois State. We'll take a look at how we got here with the halftime stats. Chase, as you can see, Indiana State has been really pushing the ball forward and taking a lot of shots tonight. Now, of course, they have a lesser shot percentage, only having three on goal out of the six shots tonight, but that's been doing a lot for them in this game. And that's the big thing. Indiana State's defense being able to withstand that pressure from Illinois State's offense and be able to just hold them to four shots. That's a big deal, Chase. Only allowing four shots from Illinois State is unheard of, especially in the last five games for this team. They've thrown them off their game, and that's something that Illinois State was hoping that wouldn't happen when they travel away. And Indiana State's offense also been able to make a lot of noise, not only with their shots and shots on goal, 
but you've been able to see that they've been applying as much pressure as they can. They have two offsides, obviously not something you want, but it displays the pressure they're trying to come with. Absolutely. Coach Hanley has said, take the chance, take the opportunity, run to the offensive third and see what, what you can do with it. Indiana State has definitely been doing that. Now, like what we're saying, that ball is a second early, or a, sorry, a second late, which makes the offensive player, the offensive Sycamore offsides. Now, that's not too big of a deal, I mean, if it's just a turnover, but at least it creates an opportunity. Clearly, that worked out a couple of times once in the goal. And it absolutely does. Now we're going to take a look at how we kind of got here with the first early goal, which was what we thought might be one of the biggest factors in this game. Indiana State had a better response than what what they thought they might. Absolutely, Chase. That first goal was for Illinois State by Michaela Unger, and it was a fantastic opportunity with that ball right in the middle of the, the box. But then you saw Indiana State return. Sydney Hamker had an incredible goal off the corner kick, and then we saw Lena Steffen throw her body in there and get another goal for Indiana State. Big deal for Indiana State um, getting ahead of the game by half. So Indiana State with a 2-1 to one lead over Illinois State. We've got a 2-1 to one game here with Indiana State in the lead over Illinois State. Of course, we're in the middle of conference play. We'll take a look at the upcoming schedule for Illinois State and their, their road ahead. Chase, I Illinois State has a lot to deal with in the next few games. They're facing Valparaiso, then Drake, then Missouri State. And the big issue here is that they are facing two more away games and only one more home game. Now, we've seen their confidence at home. We've seen them have that winning streak. And they hold it off for the away games. Away, they're only 2-4-2 two, and two on the season this one. Right now, they're behind as well. Indiana State, on the flip side of that, though, as we take a look at their upcoming schedule, is going to have a little bit of a tough road as well. Chase, absolutely. You have Evansville, Valparaiso, and Northern Iowa. All good teams, all all a chance for, for Indiana State to challenge themselves and push themselves, especially in the offensive third. Now, we've seen them change things up a little bit here, taking more shots, more shots on goal. Will that prevail against these other, these other teams? And historically, Indiana State is plays very well at home. Hasn't held true in the last two home matches, but looking to try to continue that trend against Evansville and Valparaiso and maybe get a big win against Northern Iowa. 
I want to take another look at the conference standings, see where everybody stands right now and how things might shake up if the Sycamores win this one. Absolutely, Chase. Right now, Illinois is Illinois State is 2-1, and one, and that can make a big difference for them if they have a win in this game, putting them, obviously, 3-1, three, three and one, and that can make a, th a difference. But for Indiana State, having a win in the conference could be huge for their confidence. Coach Hanley was talking about that before this game. Have some confidence in your team and in yourself, and you can win this conference. Everyone looking to shake things up inside the Missouri Valley Conference. We'll see where this one goes between Indiana State and Illinois State. And we are here in the second half. Indiana State with a 2-1 lead over Illinois State. We'll see how the Redbirds respond after coming out of the locker room for halftime. Chase, it's a big deal for this Indiana State to come away with the lead after the first half. Coach Hanley was talking about how important it is for this team to gain some confidence if they want to be able to contend in this match. And I can tell you for a fact... Having a 2-1 lead over your opponent by the halftime gives you a lot of chances to, to, to dwell on that in your half and really push for another strong half. Of course, on the other side of that, Illinois State is ready to fight back. They've been in this position before, and they're ready to fight for that lead in the second half. Even against Loyola, they were able to fight back against a team who ranks top in the country for putting goals in the back of the net. They had that response that they needed, though. They went ahead and put up five goals. As three of those being in the second half, so if they have another offensive performance like that in this one, Indiana State could be in some trouble. Absolutely, Jason. We talk about Loyola. We, Illinois State has a great shot record. They have the second most shots in the Missouri Valley Conference, second only to Loyola. Of course, they didn't let that hold them back, and again, they fought back and put the, put the ball in the back of the net another four more times, allowing them to win the game uh, against Loyola. But but we're talking about this game. It's a little flip-flop from what we thought this game would be like in the beginning. We thought Illinois State would put way more shots and have less shots on goal. Of course, today, Indiana State has had more shots and less shots on goal. And so it's been a little different for both of these teams here tonight, but it's clearly working out for Indiana State. Illinois State not too far behind. Now second half under action. And, yeah, Sean, you're exactly right. We thought that was going to happen because Illinois State loves to dominate time of possession. They love to put as much pressure as they can. 
keep that ball in their offensive third. Indiana State's had the answer being able to put their ball, put the ball in the offensive third just as much. Absolutely, and it's working out for both of these teams, both coming out strong and, and intending on pushing that ball in each of their own offensive thirds. So we'll have an early throw in here. That ball gets over towards Katie Wells. We'll see if she can get the cross. Great footwork just to keep this ball. Now going to set back. Ball into the box. Huge cross for Indiana State and another opportunity. Chase, that is exactly what Indiana needs State needs to do. We talked about earlier. Receive, turn, fire away. And that's exactly what we'll see here from Tessa Leong. She has the opportunity, drops it to her feet, and puts one at the goalie. Of course, that didn't go in the net, but that's the kind of opportunity you want to create. Well, just a great opportunity overall for Indiana State. Just the first touch from Stefan, able to get that ball over towards Leong and send it just over the top of the crossbar. Chase, this is going to be an intense fight to the nail for both of these teams. I'm excited to see what's been going on so far, but I'm really excited to see what this second half is going to hold. And their physical play once again, trying to keep that ball in play, Stefan. Stefan, we've mentioned it many times, just a freshman, but plays great out of St. Louis, Missouri. Chase, Alina Steffen plays like each game is her last game. She is not worried about her body when she sees that ball in the air. It's almost a gut instinct. Now, I've played with guys like that before, and it is phenomenal to see athletes who are so ready, who have that tunnel vision for that ball. It makes for a very interesting game, and it definitely makes for a little bit of a scary opponent for that Illinois State team. Bringing the passion into this one. Indiana State now with the ball. Trying to get that in. Huge breakaway for Indiana State. If they could have gotten a foot on that, it would have made a big difference for their game. They only had one more. Tessa Leon was ready in the box to receive that ball. Of course, Illinois State defense was there as well, but those are the kind of opportunities you want to see. Now, I'm sure Coach Hanley is happy that her team is pushing so hard in the first couple minutes of this second half. That would have brought up a great two-on-two -two opportunity for Indiana State, including being against Smith. Now, out towards midfield. Indiana State doing everything they can to keep that ball into their offensive third. Here's the setback. And a mishap there. Sends the ball out towards the side. Chase, that was another dangerous play by the Illinois State defense. They, have, they are clearly off their rhythm a little bit. And that is the same kind of position they were in when uh, a goal was scored by Indiana State in the last half. It was a one-on-one -on -one with the goalie, and there was a bit of a mishap, and they were able to pop it above the goalie. Luckily for Illinois State, that didn't happen just now. So the cross comes over. Indiana State not... Able to bring that ball in. And there's physical play. No call made. Coach Hanley throwing her hands in the air. Not okay with that, with that fight. But in the same regard, Alina Stefan is not one to hold off when she's getting, getting near that ball. So uh, I guess in one way, if you dish it out, you got to be ready to receive it. And there's the clear from Indiana State. So we will have a throw in for the Redbirds. The Redbirds seem a little frustrated, not knowing what to do with that ball. Wanting to move it forward, and now they do, but take away from this by the Sycamores. Chase, they are playing with confidence right now. The Sycamores know where they want to put the ball. They're not worried about this off about this in Illinois State offense being on their toes. They are playing their ball game, and that's exactly what you want. Uh, that's what Indiana State wants tonight. Of course, Illinois State wants to regain their ball control as well. But we're seeing Illinois State do what Indiana State was doing earlier in the game, just shoving it up the front and seeing if they can get a goal. And Dane came away with the takeaway, but a foul called. And we've seen this back line for Indiana State's defense being able to switch the ball, doing a great job of spreading out the defense. And there's a clear by the Redbirds. Sycamores will chase that one down. Quickly and efficiently pushed out. And now a takeaway and an opportunity for the Redbirds. In towards the box and now one deflected up. 
this is just another opportunity where Illinois State likes to put that ball and give a sh put a shot on goal, but Indiana State, it's almost as if they've been told, do not let them take the shot. And as you saw from uh, from Indiana State defense, they were not about to let that happen. They were You saw bodies flying there when that ball made contact with an Illinois State foot. We thought this was going to be a physical matchup, and that's definitely what we're getting right now. Two or three players were on the ground after that play. Outside of the box, the Redbirds with possession. Sycamore's defense swarms in towards the middle to get this takeaway. And here comes the cross inside the middle of the box. Dang gets the good touch to help send this out. And set back over towards Smith. Chase, what we just saw there was one of the few times in this second half that that ball has been in the Indiana State uh, defensive third. Indiana State is clearly, clearly in control of the field right now. But... That's that's nothing for this Illinois State D, uh, Illinois State team. They are used to having uh, they're used to being behind and having the opportunity to come back up. Illinois State looking for the response right now. So that one's sent out. We'll have another throw in for Indiana State. Nowhere to clear that ball. Now taken away. Here comes the shot on goal towards the corner. That was some great footwork by uh, Illinois State offense, especially the outside, being able to make a play, pass the defender, and put it in the middle of the middle of the box makes a huge opportunity for Illinois State. Of course, that was a little wide, and otherwise that would have been a, definitely a, a challenge for a goal. And no one there for the cross. And that's not the first time I've seen Illinois State sail off yet push that ball up the field, and put a cross in the middle of the field, but it's been far less the second half. It has an Indiana State right now still leading shots with seven. Illinois State with six. Here comes the cross. No one able to make connection. Chase, Illinois State is the one who had the mentality about a response, but what we just saw there was almost the identical play that in Illinois State made a second go. Push it up across the outside of the field and cross it and see if there's an opportunity. This one was was a little too quick for the uh, for the Sycamore offense. Smith towards midfield. Illinois State looking to push on the left side of the field. Now the takeaway. Lafayette hoping to get it up the five side of the field again, but this time met with some serious defense. And Teal showing great effort here on the defensive end. Chase, Riley Teal has not lightened up since the first minute of this game. She has been full forward uh, press on this Illinois State offense. Trying to push this ball forward. Redbirds looking to get into their offensive third in the clear. Now, Chase, that was a foul play, but that is a lot of times what offense tries to do. When there's a defender on your back and a wild ball in the air, you want to move that defender out of the way so that ball goes right over their head, creates an opportunity for you. Of course, Indiana State's defensive line was still there to make up the slack, but that ref wasn't about to let that foul go. Illinois State, we knew they were a rough team coming in. Right now, leads fouls 5-2. to two. Illinois State not able to keep the ball on the ground very often to get some good passes. A lot of takeaways here coming from Indiana State. Now trying to push the ball forward in another deflection. Now in the offensive third. Here comes the strong defense out towards the corner. <laughs> oh. 
Only the second corner kick of the night for Illinois State. Now, Chase, Indiana State has an opportunity to, to defend this set piece, something that they've not been able to do in the last couple of home games. Something they struggled in against Drake, this time with the answer in that Drake matchup. They lost the game 0-3, and that was off of three set pieces that Drake scored on. Oh, you're absolutely right. I was mentioning those home games, but you're absolutely right. They went away for a game this week against Drake, and just like you said, three set pieces is what they got scored on, and Coach Hanley was not okay with that. In fact, that's something that this Indiana State defense has been, sorry, Indiana State team as a whole has been working on. Those set pieces, how, do, how learning how to defend them, and clearly it's working out for them. Perhaps they've been pushing a lot harder this week, and, um, and, and they've been able to come across with that. And with that clear and mentioning that Drake matchup, that was really an interesting game that happened. They went to play each other on a Friday. Rain came in, unplayable conditions after playing. Towards the 18th minute, Drake able to put one goal up. Indiana State not liking the way they played, but with that weather coming in unfavorable play conditions, they went ahead and said, we're going to play on Saturday. Not just play on Saturday, but they restarted the entire match. It was a great matchup up towards the 72nd minute. Drake ended up putting those three goals in the last, in 15 minutes up. Absolutely, and, and Chase, you said it. it. It's a little weird when you start a game, go 18 minutes in, and then start fresh the next day. It's almost like a redemption, an opportunity for you to have a clean slate. And Indiana State came back in that first half, regard, regardless of the circumstances and the weather, they were able to fight that first half. That said, they weren't able to come away with the win, and, and Drake had some fantastic plays um, in the second half. In that matchup, Indiana State's defense led by none other than Casey Wallace, who had a great performance, doing it here again. Again, we see a lot of physicality on the field, and not surprised at all that Alina Stefan is right in the center of all of that. Looking for the call that time. And that cross just off the mark. Chase, we saw Indiana State make passes like that in the beginning of this game. We're seeing Illinois State make th making those mistakes now. This is going to be big for, the, for the, uh, the structure of this game and the momentum for Indiana State. So as that one goes back, Smith going to bring it in. Very interesting call by the goalie here. Clearly, the Illinois State defender had the foot on the ball, had a couple feet on the last offensive player from the Sycamores, but the goalie came out and grabbed the ball anyway. Now, a lot of times you'd let that ball go out and give your chance, your team a chance to reset. Goalie wanted to grab the ball this time. And that's something we've seen a lot from her, a lot of tendency of her coming out, even trying to get that kick right away so nobody can really come in and make something happen. Absolutely, and, and though it's unusual, it, it is for your own team, it may, gives you a little bit of confidence because she has the confidence to do that. Stepping outside of your goalie box is a big deal, and, and it changes the momentum of the game, definitely changes the attitude of the players. Illinois State looking to try to change the momentum of this game right now, down 2-1. to one. Indiana State has been pushing this ball forward really hard in the last few minutes. That's the third opportunity in the offensive third for the Sycamores. Ball is taken away from Wells. We're seeing a lot of back and forth right now. Both of these teams are desperate to put another one in the back of the net. A lot of battles here at midfield. Nobody really able to get into their offensive third right now. So we saw the Sycamores booted out the side of the field that time. In the last few plays, we've seen them take their time with it, find their player and put it at a foot. But clearly this, this Illinois State offense is pushing a little harder than what Indiana State would like. And they, they look like they're getting a little nervous pushing that ball outside the field. That could be a great opportunity to get into their offensive third for Illinois State now taken away. So Cassidy Simone is going to check in for Stefan. Chase, let's talk about a few of the players that have been moved in and out of this game right now. We just saw Danielle, Danielle Varner come in for Katie Sidlowski, and like you just said, Cassidy Simonis coming in for Alina Steffen. These are players that Coach Hanley have, has been saying she needs them to move around the middle of the field. She needs them not only to defend the ball, be a part of that defensive team, but to be creative on that offensive team and push the ball up, creating some opportunities for people like Katie Wells. And in situations like this, this is where Hanley really trusts somebody like Simonis 
who's a senior who's been in these type of situations before and played in games like this. Chase, we talked about a little earlier this game about how Indiana State was the one taking more shots and, and having more shots on goal, but and now we're seeing that those numbers have about, about matched up. Illinois State has taken six shots, three of which were on goal. In, Indiana State has taken now seven shots, three of which were on goal. So this is a great opportunity for both the teams fighting neck and neck, almost in the same manner, in fact, in this game. It's a very, very close game right now. And right now this matchup is kind of switched to be a midfield battle, but maybe an opportunity coming for the Redbirds. But that shot, Sullivan able to bat it out. And that one, as it goes into the back of the net, looks like there was a call beforehand. Chase, that's the danger of this kind of play. It looks like for a second you have the chance for a goal, but she was caught off sides in the end. Now a lot of times that ball has a breakaway opportunity, and that that was a crucial defensive play there we saw by the Sycamores. It didn't look planned. It didn't look like it was well controlled. But that stopping of the ball in that last minute is what gave the opportunity for that Illinois State to take one step too far and get the offsides. Would have been big if that one would have went in for, this, for Illinois State. Would have tied this match up. And we'll have another foul called. Redbird starting the racket up. Illinois State is not too happy with these calls. There's didn't been a lot of physicality on both teams, but that said, Indiana State almost has practice with the physicality. They know how to do it, but how to do it correctly. And that's what we're seeing here tonight. Illinois State may not be used to that kind of scrappy play and is, is making some mistake in their physicality. An Indiana State team that shows a lot of grit. This with the set piece. A lot of the Sycamores on that far post towards the outside of the box. Here comes the cross. Looking to bring it in towards the middle of the box. And the clear by the Redbirds and another foul. And this time with Indiana State in the, in, caught in the mix. Chase, this game has gone back and forth in many ways. And, and look at Illinois State not wasting a second with that ball. They know that they are ready to respond as soon as that ball makes an attempt at their goal. And we just saw that, but Indiana State is ready as ever. That could have been a great breakaway for the Redbirds. Taken away and now another throw in for Riley Teal. And this is what we're talking about, this midfield battle, the ball going back and forth. Nobody this time really able to bring it in and get a good pass off. Absolutely. And you see this intensity from Illinois State really shaking, shaking things up. Indiana State might take a second more um, in controlling that ball and pushing it to the other side of the field, but they're not willing to take that chance right now. If there are Illinois State numbers up the field, they're pushing that ball out. And that was another opportunity for the Redbirds. Taken away, shot just too far out, maybe a cross. Some excellent ball control by Tessa Leong as she's moving the ball back, Indiana, giving Indiana State the chance to control it. Now looking to push forward. Nobody there for Indiana State. Sycamore is looking to do work on the left side, trying to go down the line. Miscommunications, that one rolls out. Again, again, def great defensive playing by Illinois State. It takes a lot of confidence not to chase that ball and grab it when it's running towards that outside line. Now, Indiana State didn't give as much pressure as they usually do in that situation, but it just takes a lot of mental aptitude to be able to hold back and let that ball fall out. Trying to go towards the middle of the field, the Redbirds with the deflection. Some great contact by the Illinois State defense getting that ball out there, but Indiana State has come back again. Tessa Leong chasing that ball, looking for the cross. She's going to send it in, and just off the mark, Smith able to come up and get that grab. Chase, that was a very, very close ball and an incredible fight by uh, Indiana State. Not willing to let that opportunity go amiss. Smith with a lot of poise to be able to track that ball down. 
Absolutely, and that was great play. Even uh, even Indiana State Sycamores were ready and there with the ball, about to get the head on it if if it, uh, Illinois State didn't take it away. So now the Sycamore is able to set back and switch. We're seeing that calm, controlled pace Indiana State is setting for this game. This is exactly what we saw Illinois State handle in the beginning of this game. They were calm. They were controlled. Now, of course, they were far more intense pushing the ball up the, uh, the front of the field, but we know Indiana State doesn't play that way all the time. In fact, they like to maintain control in their back there. They like to have um, their defensive line dictating the play, and, and we're seeing that happen again. In the beginning of this game, though, Indiana State wasn't doing that. They were really pushing the ball up. Yeah, Illinois State, we talked about, is a team who likes to win time of possession, even dominate it. Indiana State, they're fine if they're winning time of possession, even if the ball's in their defensive third. Absolutely, and there's a lot of pl teams, professional teams, that play that way. You see that in Europe all the time, where teams will hold the ball in their defensive third, control it, bounce it around in their midfield, and when they have the opportunity, they strike for the center of the, the goal. Indiana State shows a lot of pride in this back line. Battle for the ball out of midfield. And there you see that calm reaction from Indiana State. Chase, we talked about confidence before. This is exactly what we were looking for from Indiana State. But it looks like Illinois State will have an opportunity here. Just going into the boxes, that one tapped away. Another fight for the ball. Both Illinois State and Indiana State challenging that ball with every ounce. Of energy and and that didn't go in for Illinois State but it was a great opportunity they want to cre keep creating those opportunities when they get into the goal box and and while that ball was pushed away let's not let's not be fooled that was exactly what Illinois State was looking for and we're gonna have a red card now on coach Sively Chase that is a big deal but this coach is not about to let his players know he wants his players to know that he's going to fight for them no matter what. But a red card sends him off the field. Sends him off the field, Chase. He is not able to participate in this game or coach this team. And that is a huge thing for Illinois State. Now they're going to have to really respond. Something that they put a lot of pride in, but he's going to have to go off the field now. A lot of things shaking up for the Redbirds. Chase, Coach Sylvie is not a coach to to be brought down by a lot of things. In fact, he has a very good attitude about things. But I can definitely understand as a coach mentoring and in a lot of ways being a a, uh, a father figure for some of these girls, being very offended and put off when, when, when he saw a clear foul and it wasn't given a call. And you might have saw a quick snippet of it. A lot of respect from, from their coach coming over, just got ejected, went over and shook Julie Hanley's hand. Chase, that takes a lot of of integrity on the coach's behalf. He knows that what he did was for his team. He knows that he was defending his own player in a call that he didn't think was appropriate. And yes, he will suffer the consequences, but that's something that you need to do for your team. And he showed a lot of grace and integrity in doing that, even though it may not have been appropriate for the ref. So a lot of respect there. Illinois State gonna have to answer big time now. Indiana State still up two to one. And Chase, we talk about the grace and integrity with which the coach handled this situation, even though what he did was inappropriate for the ref. But what does this mean for these Redbirds right now? How do they feel? They're already down one. The minutes are closing down, only 21 to go. What does this mean for them? Well, you might even have that reaction of, okay, my coach just did that for me. I'm going to lay it all out right now. I'm going to have this reaction where if he's going to put it on the line for me, I'm going to win this for him. Yeah, and talking in terms of how they were talking, I'm going to respond. This ref just threw my coach off the field. I'm going to play clean. I'm going to play right, but I'm going to fight to the grid and put this ball in the back of the net. Perhaps that's the mentality that they have right now, and hopefully that will push a ball for the Redbirds into the back of the net. So that ball sent back, and now Illinois State trying to push it up. And we're seeing a lot of spacing right now, which is taking a lot of time away from Redbirds' opportunities.
Trying to bring that ball down, and there's more physical play. Chase, that's a lot of physicality coming from this Indiana State team right now, perhaps more than that's necessary in this 2-1 to one lead. But this is not to be unexpected. We knew the Sycamore team was going to be physical from the very beginning, and they're showing that again tonight. And this is exactly why Julie Hanley said in her time at Illinois State they hated playing Indiana State. Mm -hmm. And there comes the Sycamore defense, taking away another opportunity. Jay, speaking about this defense and Coach Hanley, Coach Hanley said that no matter what, she would never trade this Sycamore defense for any other defense in the entire Valley. This is a strong comment from this coach, knowing that she has a lot of faith in her Sycamore defense, not only in the players out there, but in this Indiana State team as a whole, always having that defensive pressure from, from the Sycamores. Oh, without a doubt, you might see a lot of change-ups in the Indiana State's lineup, but you're going to see it all from the midfield up to the, the offensive unit. More physical play there once again. But that back line is established. It's staying the same. They enjoy what they have and they respect and have a lot of confidence in that back line. And Chase, that gives so much freedom to your offensive players too when there is that freedom that they know that that ball is going to get behind them and it's going to be okay. But speaking of physicality, you don't often see Tessa Leon get into it on the left side of the field, but she was there fighting for the ball and got the call here. We'll see what Sycamores can make of this set piece. Sullivan sends it in towards the box. Indiana State with the first touch, but bounced off the wrong direction. Huge opportunity again, but it's really hard to control that ball flying in the air that fast with that many bodies around it. There was a great opportunity, and Indiana State did get the first touch. It's good that that ball didn't travel the other direction. And offset pieces, we've talked about how they, they want to keep it in there. That's where they find a lot of success, but Indiana State just hasn't been able to find that success trying to get it off their head. Yes, Jason, and that's not to say that they haven't always had that. Last year they had Maddie Orff now training and playing in Sweden, but she was great in the air when, when she was playing for this Indiana State team and was able to do a lot of things defensively and offensively for this team. She's not there anymore to hand, handle that pressure. And Orff was such a big player that offensively she handled almost half of the scoring that Sycamores did. So right now, trying to, tr trying to find that answer of who's going to fill that role. They've got some newcomers who can do it. They've got returners that are able to help out. So a lot of unanswered questions for Indiana State moving forward, but they're trying to figure it out. Absolutely, Chase. And just like you said, there are returners and there are new players. Now, returning, we have Katie Wells, who's a fantastic forward, definitely leading this team offensively. But we also have returning players. And inside the box now for the Redbirds, here comes the shot, Denton, with the deflection. Chase, these Sycamores are not letting a single thing get past that six-yard line for the, for the uh, Indiana State defense. And Sullivan with a big catch there. Chase, that is a scary play for this Illinois State offense. You don't want to get that too close to the goalie. Now, obviously, she didn't have eyes on that ball, but it's very, very hard to, to see the whole field like that and not make a play. But that was great mental aptitude by, by Indiana State goalie. If that would have been just inside a little bit more. Van Lowe could have came in, maybe got a header on it. But another opportunity taken away. Indiana State's defense with the answer. Katie Wells, again, drawing that ball back, taking her time, um, directing where the ball should go. Perhaps, though, as Coach Hanley has said time and again this season, Katie Wells should take the ball a little more selfishly. Drive it up the field. Pass a few players. Take a shot, if you will, past the 18-yard line. But instead, Katie Wells has been dropping back and playing a little more um, as a midfielder position. And there comes in Stefan. She's going to come back in. Wells now to check out. Chase, if we haven't seen bodies fall already, it's going to happen now with Alina Stefan in the game. This is a girl not afraid to throw her body around and fight for that ball. And especially now as this game gets in the crunch time, maybe looking for some more defense out of Indiana State, trying to protect this 2-1 lead. That one goes back to Smith. That was an excellent play by this Indiana, uh, Illinois State defense, heading the ball back to the goalie, giving the goalie an opportunity to catch it with their hands. And she's going to bring this one out as far as she can before she boots it. 16 minutes in the game, but Illinois State Redbirds are playing like it's the last minute, fighting to the nail for every single inch of space and every opportunity for a goal. And we know 16 minutes is a lot of time, but in some ways it's also a very short amount of time. It'll go before we know it. And Indiana State, they are very familiar with this type of situation where Drake was able to put up three goals in 15 minutes. 
So they know goals can come easy. They got to make sure Illinois State can't find the equalizer. And Chase, we're not even saying that this is something different than what's been going on. Ball pinging around a little bit over there. It's not something different that's been going on. In fact, Illinois State came into this game knowing that they weren't going to change a single thing this game. No matter who they were facing or where they were at, they were going to keep consistent with the strategy that they've been using all season and have been working for them in the last five games. Clearly tonight, it's a little more of a challenge against this Indiana State defense. And they knew it was going to be a challenge not only coming into Indiana State to face their defense, but knowing that they're coming into Indiana State. They're playing at Memorial Stadium a place where Indiana State is historically very good at. Inside the box now for Indiana State. There's the cross. No one there for the answer. Great cross, Chase. And, and the thing about this play is that you saw the Sycamore offense running up the right side of the field and holding that ball. Now, you might wonder, why didn't the inside offense push forward past the defenders and go towards the goal? And the truth is, it's because if she did, it would have been offsides. That's the danger of holding the ball for too long, driving up the right side of the field. There were no defenders behind that last offender. So that's, that's why that Sycamore offense wasn't able to capitalize on that play as much as they could have. But it was still a good opportunity. It's still in the offensive third for the Sycamores. So we'll see what they can do with it now. And here comes in another substitution. Jensen Margheim to come in. So Indiana State trying to keep some fresh legs here in the last 14 minutes. Jason, it's not to say that Margheim hasn't been extremely influential in this game, and especially as she's been substituted, she's substituting in for Daniel Varner, another pivotal person to this game. There have been a lot of players stepping up in this season, and which gives Coach Hanley a lot of flexibility in having people being sick or people being injured. There are other members on the bench who are ready and eager to fight in this game and have their own name to uphold flexibility and a lot of depth to this team. Indiana State's taking out Varner and Wells right now. And that's a big deal, Chase. In fact, when we were looking at Missouri State playing Indiana State just a few days ago, uh, sorry, just a couple weeks ago, maybe an opportunity here for Indiana State. Stefan unable to get it, and now there's some more physical play. No calls made, but the official are going to come over and talk. Chase, before that attempt, we were talking about players like Alina Steffen and Katie Wells and Varner who are expected to stay up. Having two of those three players off the field right now is something um, that Indiana State doesn't deal with very often. It'll see how that works in their, their playing right now. And, of course, you're taking a lot of offense out when you see Varner and Wells check out. Indiana State, though, still finding a lot of success trying to get the ball over towards their offensive third. Absolutely, and how they do right now will dictate whether or not it was particular players or it was the team as a whole that was making the difference. Trying to go towards the middle of the field now and push forward. We're seeing a lot of physicality uh, from this Indiana State team, but not many fouls being called. This battle at midfield will continue with the throw-in coming up. And there you see Katie Welsh checking back in. And if Indiana State continues this pressure, gets into the offensive third, now with Wells back in, could be dangerous. Absolutely, Chase. And having Katie Wells come in with fresh legs is going to be a big thing for, for Indiana State right now. They're going to want to give her the ball. Now, the thing is, other teams know about Katie Wells and her tremendous track record with having that ball in the offensive third. So they're going to st try and stop her right now. And as you can see, there are already three defenders on her. One touch with the ball, there's three, three red, Redbirds sitting right there. But you think on the flip side of that, she brings in three defenders. Somebody's open, Sean. That is absolutely correct. And that's why a lot of opportunity, that's why she's also the leading Sycamore for, for assists. She, has, she draws the defenders and creates an opportunity for another Sycamore to make the play. Here comes the pressure with the defense from Illinois State. Sullivan able to get that one. Out towards midfield. Redbirds looking to bring it down.
Now Andy going to stay with the ball out in the middle of the field. And the midfielder's showing great effort. Wells to bring the ball up here, trying to get that through ball to Stefan and just off the mark. There's a little bit of miscommunication there, Chase, from what was about to happen. That was an excellent ball by Katie Wells, but Alina Stefan was caught standing there, not making a run with it. Now, that could be again, because there was a defender there that she could not pass, but it was a great opportunity if it were able to connect. And maybe now an opportunity for Indiana State, looking to chase this ball down. A lot of speed from that outside, but not many people in the box. And now it's going to get deflected. We'll see if it goes out before... And it will, so a throw in for Indiana State in their own offensive third. Emily Dickman going to check in for the Redbirds. Bringing in some sonority here now. Wells going to split some defenders, try to get this one into the box. And there you see Smith once again coming out deep to get that ball. Another huge play by, by this Illinois State goalkeeper being able to see that ball and run to it before any Sycamore has a chance to put a foot on it. We saw that defense by the Redbirds not going there. If the goalkeeper hadn't gotten out of her box, that would have been a goal for Indiana State. So Smith having to have that quick reaction works out for him now. Sycamore's maybe with a run here on the left side. Sent over towards Wells. Inside the box. And a great defensive effort to send that one out. Chase, there's a lot of physicality in this play, but that was just another example of how waiting a second too long can deny you an opportunity. We had an opportunity here to push the ball forward and even an opportunity for a goal, but having that second, that third touch can stop you from having that option. And the most physical player on the field trying to get up off the, the pitch now. Stefan took a hard hit. Alina Stefan not worried about her own injuries as long as she can play. She's up and fighting again. And talk about passion once again. She's a player who's going to leave it out here on the field. And even slow to get up, she's not going to head off. Absolutely. You see her running there with just a bit of a you know an uneven run as if she's been injured but Alina Stefan is not the kind of player who gives up in any circumstance and is ready to fight and I'm sure you'll see that again here in the next few minutes working through the pain for her team now under eight minutes left to go Redbirds looking for the cross defense able to send it back out Now, Chase, we've seen the Redbirds send more numbers up during set pieces like that, but you can see them holding back now. Why? Because this Indiana State has really put up a formidable offense, and they're a little worried to let their numbers go on, the, on, the, on their defensive third. And even with the Redbirds being able to keep possession right now, they're going to have to find a way to work this ball in. Deep shots aren't going to do it. And that opportunity taken away once again. Indiana State's back line just with the answers. Indiana State is in a comfortable place. They are very confident in their abilities right now, which is why they have the space to hold back for a second. Even with Redbirds' numbers up in the front, they hold back for a second and wait for their own opportunity to clear the ball. It's been working out great. Staying patient. Now we'll see a substitution come in. Jenna Miller going to check in for Indiana State for Stefan. <laughs> Now, Chase, we see some real intensity there with that play. Alina Stefan going down with that play, and, and clearly she was just a little too hurt to play play on, or at least the coaches thought so. And a lot of times with a player like Alina Stefan, even though she can go the extra mile, even though she can go the next six minutes and 25 seconds, coach is not going to let her risk that and want, wanting to keep her around for the rest of the season. And we'll see another foul come out. That one going to be a yellow. Hamper just a little bit too eager to try to get to that ball, trying to make a play for her team, gets that foot up in the trip. 
We've seen a lot of physicality here today, Chase, and that, that yellow does not surprise me. It does surprise me coming so late in the game. There has been a lot of physicality, but the refs have let these girls play on. We'll see if any more cards come out as, as, as both of these teams fight, fight to the nail for the last goal in this match. And a great defensive effort there from Wells. Now stuck in the corner. We'll see how she reacts. Goes out, and we'll have another set piece here for the Redbirds. Chase, this is going to be the fourth corner kick for Indiana State, and they have been able to make some opportunities off of this. Sorry, for Illinois State, it's going to be their third, sorry, third corner kick, and this is a great opportunity for Illinois State to capitalize and maybe make a goal here. It comes in. Redbirds with the first touch and the deflection now out. Would have been a great opportunity for Illinois State to get the equalizer. This is a big difference for Indiana State style of play. We've seen them miss that first opportunity. We've seen them miss that second opportunity. But Coach Hanley has clearly had enough telling her team, grab that ball when, they, when it gets in the air. Redbirds unable to chase that one down. And time starting to become a factor. Five minutes left to go. Illinois State down by one. Chase, we saw that yellow card go to Indiana State just a minute ago, but there have been six fouls for Indiana State today compared to Illinois State's seven fouls. It's been a very intense game, very physical game, and it's not something we're unexpected from Indiana State um, or for any opponent ready to fight to the nail. Sending that one over towards Wells. She's able to slow down the pace, and you see her just turning on in an instant. That's one of the great things about Katie Wells. Having that speed and quickness, she can decide when she wants to turn it on and when she wants to turn it off, and a lot of times the defense isn't ready to deal with it. Unable to control that one off the first touch as he goes out. So throw in here for the Redbirds. They're going to have to try to find some way to officially move the ball forward. A great header by Illinois State, hoping to put it down the field to the outside forward that wasn't there. This is We're seeing some miscommunication, a breakdown of the field for Illinois State. Now Varner going to check in for Margheim. Good positioning there from Indiana State. And the setback coming for the Redbirds. Now pushing it down the line on the left side. Until then, we Chase, we saw another four or five passes being connected by this, these, this Redbird team. It's important for them to maintain control of the ball, especially maintaining composure in the last three minutes here. That is what will dictate whether or not they can put a goal on the back of the net or at least put a shot on goal. A team who is very aware of how to get shots, especially shots on goal, looking to try to do it again here tonight. Haley Smith coming way out of her box to make that play, and this is something we've seen her do all night. She is not afraid to come out of the box. Absolutely not. Very confident in her team, and her team very confident to let her come out that far. Indiana State is not giving an inch of space for this Redbird team. As you see that again, another huge push. And now a challenge by the Sycamores for the, for the Illinois State goalie. And you think about how big that play is. Not only just the deflection, but time ticking and ticking away. Taking away these opportunities for the Redbirds. Absolutely, Chase. Just as we're coming to two minutes, it, it is in, important. It's very important for this Illinois State team to push the ball up the field and really give some pressure here. Indiana State allowing that to happen. So Smith with the kick from midfield. She's going to keep it on the ground over towards the left side. Illinois State trying to maintain some composure. But drop it off into that Sycamore defense, and that is not what you want to do if you're this Illinois State offense right now. Illinois State just not able to find those opportunities inside the box. Another huge run for Indiana State, keeping it in. You got some numbers in the middle.
Going to shield down one as he goes out. Chase, that was an interesting game, uh, interesting play by this Indiana State offense, but not entirely surprising. When you're in the last minute of play, you want that clock to tick. You want every opportunity you can get, but at the same time, that was an opportunity for a cross, and sometimes it's hard to, to separate that. Perhaps a smart play by this Indiana State offense. And they will have another throw in coming up deep into their offensive third, and maybe that opportunity for another cross comes here. Absolutely, but this makes all the difference. How many seconds are taking away as that hand, that ball ch is changed from hands and as that ball gets thrown in? Now trying to rush things are the Redbirds. Under a minute left to go. Looking to extend this game. Out past midfield. Still with possession, maybe now an opportunity. And here comes the cross. Contact made, but sending it out of bounds. Chase, that was a fantastic run by the Illinois State Redbirds. Perhaps their final opportunity to drop that ball into the center of the goal, have that opportunity as a cross. But that was a great effort by Illinois State and a great first contact made by their player. That, that shows some serious training and some serious chemistry. It really does, and time still taking away. 25 seconds left to play here. Indiana State's defense in midfield with the answer. And just going to clear that one down the field. Smith going to have to come chase it down. And she puts the boot on to send this one towards the offensive third. Indiana State, though, with the answer, able to get the clear and the win. 2-1 to one victory for Indiana State. Absolutely, Chase. This has been a huge game for both of these teams, playing and fighting to the very last nail for each of these teams, and they clearly put it out all out there tonight. I can't say that each, any of these, either of these teams, played less than they have all season. In fact, this could have been the greatest game for both these teams. Really pushing hard, pushing each other, and pushing the opposing team. A great showing by both teams. Indiana State's going to end the five-game win streak for the Redbirds. So from Sean Anthony, I'm Chase Eric saying so long from Memorial Stadium in Terre Haute, Indiana, where tonight's final score is Indiana State 2, Illinois State 1. To watch this entire game on replay as well as others on our family of ESPN networks, log on to watchespn.com or download the Watch ESPN app. Thanks everyone for watching. This has been a presentation of ESPN.